Hey, Jock here. Okay, this video, we are creating the Bootstrap tab system in Figma using Auto Layout. This entire design, this entire video is part of a larger video where I'm creating a yoga fitness studio website, specifically in Figma and specifically for the Bootstrap framework. So that's why this video and the large video is unique. The larger video in the description below, I've added all the assets and media files, also added the full design in the description below. And the design is on the Figma community. You can literally take it and you can duplicate it and use it for whatever you want to use it. But in this specific video, we are going to look at how to create tabs and how to use the bootstrap framework tabs to design something that is absolutely awesome. So let's check it out. All right, so on this part of the video, we're going to focus on creating a bootstrap tab system. And we are going to basically create a section where we can showcase all the different classes available at our fitness or yoga center. Previously, we took our services and we moved it to the top here to basically have a look at what we are doing and just have an overall look. So I'm going to undo this by clicking on the frame itself, holding in shift and moving it down. Now, there is theory to my madness. There's a reason why I'm using different frames for each section. And later on in the video, I will explain exactly why I'm doing this. And also at the end of the video, when we are fine tuning everything, maybe changing fonts, fine tuning buttons, we'll take all these sections, all these frames, and we will put it together into one beautiful frame layout. Furthermore, we'll also use this to create our tablet and mobile, but we'll definitely do that later on. To get started with the actual bootstrap tab system, I'm going to go ahead and use our frame tool and I drag it onto our artboard. Make sure it's 1920 and the height, as always, it is not that important. I'm going to rename this to classes and perhaps use classes section. With that done, I'm going to activate auto layout. And as always, we want to make sure we use fixed width. We don't want to use hug because every time when we drag something in, it's going to affect the actual width. Next thing is I'm going to navigate to our services and I'm going to reuse the container and perhaps the heading because we probably need it. So I'm going to take the container, I'm going to copy it, put it in classes and drop it in. Now you're going to notice as always, because the height is set to hug, our classes sections height is adjusting based on the content within. But again, this is on the left hand side. So we need to make sure that it's in the center by just centering it. Also going to add a little bit of padding at the top and botting. And I'm going with 96. All right, so with that done, we are going to rename this. I'm going to rename it to latest classes. Now you'll notice that it actually stretched into two lines. And the reason for that is because we need to actually adjust the width of the heading itself. So currently right now, when I click on the heading, you will see that we have our services. It's called our services. So we're just going to rename this real quick. Latest classes. But you're going to notice that it's set to fixed. So I'm going to say hug contents. Once you've done that, it adjusted it to what we need. Alternatively, if you don't want to use this heading, you can definitely delete this, go to assets, the assets that we already created, and reuse the actual heading that we already created. But because we copied this from a previous section or previous frame, we should be good to go. Last thing, as always, I just want to fine tune the actual height just so that we can get absolute positioning. To do that, I'm going to click on my container and I'm going to detach instance. With that done, I'm going to select on the heading. We're just going to move it up a little bit. Subheading should be fine. All right, so now we have our heading added to our classes section. Now we're going to start adding the actual tabs. Now with tabs and with bootstrap tabs, it's completely customizable and you can make it look like exactly what you want. But with that said, let's go ahead and take this container and duplicate it. Now, as always, we need to make sure that we change the actual layout from horizontal to vertical. With that done, I'm going to open up our second container and I'm going to clean out the row itself. With that done, I'm going to take my text tool and we're going to start adding the actual tab text items. So let's start by adding beginner. The reason why I'm selecting beginner is because when designing a website, you always need to make it attractive. And when it comes to yoga and fitness, it's always a good idea to try and attract people that's never used yoga before. And hence why I'm using the words beginners yoga. Now with that done, let's start modifying. Let's start by detaching 
our actual font properties. And let's change this to bold. I'm also going to change the color and I'm going to select gray 800. Let's go to preview mode and click the right arrow and see, okay, we're getting there. Next thing I want to do is actually start moving around the spacing. So to do that, we're going to click on the frame. I'm going to make a spacing of 48. Go back to preview, have a quick look. Yeah, looks okay. With that done, opening up the row again, we're going to start duplicating this text. So I'm going to duplicate it two, two or three times. Once I've done that, I'm going to select all of that, group it again. I'm going to select auto layout and change the layout to horizontal. I'm also going to rename our actual newly created group. I'm going to call it tabs container. With that done, I want to add a bit of gapping. So I'm going to change the gap to perhaps 48. Note that I'm sticking with spacing of 48, 35, 25, 16, because that's all based on the spacing variables of Bootstrap itself. Now, yes, you can modify it and we will modify it when we start developing this website. But in most cases, I like sticking to default. It just makes things easier when it comes to development. Going back to preview mode, we're going to see that, okay, getting somewhere. Next up, I want to change some of the text. So let's change the second one. We're going to call it stretching. Now again, you can call it whatever you want. This is just for practice purposes. Let's call this fly yoga. I don't even think there is such a thing, but sure, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to duplicate it again. And let's say yin yoga and let's duplicate it again. So I'm using control D to do that, by the way. And let's do the last one, low yoga. Perfect. So when we navigate back to our preview mode, you can see everything is nicely next to each other. The spacing of 48, and it's nicely centered in our actual frame. Again, auto layout makes things so much easier because before that existed, we had to literally use the ruler tool and different types of tricks and techniques to make sure everything is centered properly. All right, so now with this done, the next thing I want to do is create an active preview. So to do that, we're going to select beginner's yoga and we're going to group this again. We're going to rename this to active and we're going to activate auto layout. With auto layout activated, we're going to get rid of the actual gap because we don't need it. We're going to make sure it's centered aligned. I'm going to start adding some padding. So I'm going to start with 16, left, right, and 16, top, bottom. And let's go ahead and add a full just so that we can see what we're working with here. Obviously, this is not going to be the actual full. We just want to see how this looks like right now. So I personally think we should probably go for a stroke instead of a full. So I'm going to remove that full and add a stroke. I'm going to add our actual primary color for the stroke. And I'm going to add a border radius. So let's add 25. Oh, that's too much. I'm going to add 16. That looks pretty good few minor adjustments. First off, I want to increase the actual width of the border itself. See how that looks like. I'm going to go back to preview. I'm going to select the options. I'm just going to say full screen so that we can get a more realistic view of how it really is going to look like. Now with that done, one thing I want to do is I feel like the padding at the top and bottom is too much based on the padding on the left and right. So let's go ahead and just slightly adjust it. So padding top and bottom, let's change that to 12. Adding left and right, I'm going to change that to 18, perhaps 20. I'm going to revert back to 18. I feel like 18 is probably the best spot. And that looks pretty good. Decrease our actual border radius. I'm going to change that to 14. And again, design is all about playing around until you get a perfect match. Last but not least, I just want to change the actual color from gray to primary. All right. There we have a basic bootstrap tab system and this indicates to the user that hey there's more than just one option here all right so now with that done i'm going to minimize my row i'm going to take that i'm going to duplicate it again open up the row and we're going to clean everything out perfect now we're going to start by adding our image so on the left hand side i'm going to select the rectangle tool i'm just going to drag it onto the artboard Again, notice how the height is adjusting based on what is inside of the actual frame itself. Now, with this, and again, all the media and images I'm using is available in the description of this YouTube video. So make sure to check it out. I've added it in a zip folder. You can download, extract it, and use it as you go through this course. Now, with the rectangle selected, we're gonna add our image. So I'm gonna click on the full, 
I'm going to go and add the actual image. This normally takes a second or two, especially if the image is quite large. So we're just going to give it a sec. All right, so now with it loaded in, there's one or two things I want to show you. First off, with any image that you upload into a rectangle tool or circular tool or any kind of tool, you always have the option of changing the image. So when you click on fill, you get fill, fit, crop, and tile. In most cases, I always use fill or crop. And the reason I use crop is because it allows you to slightly modify the image. So you can hold in shift and you can increase and decrease the actual image. And you can also hold in shift and move it about. Now holding in shift constrains the properties, which is in most cases exactly what you want. So I'm gonna move this image up a little bit so that I have foot just touches base at the bottom. And we should be good to go. The other thing I wanna show you with images is you can also modify the exposure. So if you want to slightly increase or decrease the exposure, contrast, saturation, temperature, tint, you name it, you can definitely do it there. It saves a lot of time. Back in the old days when this didn't exist, we always had to open it up in Photoshop and do it manually. All right, so now with our image added, one thing I want to do is just add a little bit of border radius. I'm going to go with 25 for now and see how that goes. Once that's done, I'm going to select the image. I'm just going to call it image left. I'm going to group it and activate auto layout. Rename the auto layout, we're gonna call it left. The other thing you can also do, little side note, is you can call it call MD6. The reason why we do that is because it helps the developers understand exactly what kind of column system you're gonna go for. So call meaning column, MD meaning medium device, and six meaning the half of 12. When designing or developing a bootstrap, all the columns equals to a total of 12. So six and six will equal to obviously 12. All right, so now with that done, I'm going to select the row and we're gonna change the actual gap to auto. Now, when you do that, one thing I've noticed is our layout is set to vertical. I'm gonna change that to horizontal. You're gonna notice that the actual alignment is always at the top when you do that. So I'm gonna set that to middle. Now, when you do this at this stage, you're not gonna see anything and that's fine. All right, so now with that done, I'm gonna zoom out. We're gonna reuse some of the elements that we've already used. In the previous section of this video, we essentially created a heading and paragraph, and this can definitely be reused. That said, I'm gonna minimize it. We're gonna open up a different service bar that I've already detached the instance from earlier on in the video. We're gonna open up service bar. We're gonna select changing room and that paragraph. We can copy it. Going back to what we're creating right now, we can go into the row that we've just created and we can literally just paste it. Once that's done, you'll notice that the image width actually changed. We'll get into that in a second. I'm gonna make sure that the heading and subheading is selected. I'm gonna group it again. I'm gonna call it right slash all MD6. Again, notifying the developers that we're using column six, column six. With that done, I'm gonna activate auto layout. I'm gonna change the layout to vertical. All right, one thing you're gonna notice is by default, Figma will automatically try and predict what the actual gap spacing needs to be. So obviously 285 is too much for us. So I'm gonna change that to 25. Next, I wanna select the paragraph. I'm gonna left align it. I'm gonna change the fix width to full container. All right, so we're starting to look like we are getting somewhere. Now, with that done, you will notice that the width of the image on the left-hand side has significantly decreased. So we need to change a few settings in Figma in the layout to make sure that we achieve the call six and call six, which equals to 12. To do that, we're going to select the group left call MD6. We're gonna change the hug to full container. We're gonna do the same for right. We're gonna change fix to full container. So what did we do here? Well, we told Figma to mathematically make sure that both left and right has the same width based on the rows width. I know that sounds super confusing, but let me show you. Opening up the left group, we're gonna select image, we're gonna change the fix width to full content. And one thing you're gonna notice is the image is gonna stretch. And the reason for that is because back when we imported the image, we changed full to crop. So I'm gonna change this back to full. We're not gonna worry about the height just yet. We're just gonna make sure that we change the height to full container. By doing that, the height of the image will adjust based on the content on the right-hand side. All right, closing that up. The next thing I wanna do is beef up our paragraph. So I'm going to double click on the paragraph. We're gonna open up our plugins 
and we are going to reuse the lorem ipsum that we used earlier on in the video. Now, if you only joined us now, you can easily get a plugin that generates lorem ipsum by clicking on the plugins and searching it right there in the search box. All right, so what it's telling us is we need to select the layer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. With it selected, generating five might be too excessive for what we want to do. So I'm literally going to change it to one and hit generate. All right, so it generated a paragraph for us, but we need to modify it a little bit. So I'm going to change the fixed height to hug and you're going to see it automatically adjust to the amount of content within the paragraph. All right, so now with the height being the same or hugged as the content within, I'm gonna scroll in a little bit. I'm gonna scratch off or remove some of this dummy text. Next, I just wanna change this heading to beginners yoga. All right, now we have to fine tune it. We need to add a bit of padding and spacing so it actually matches what we're looking for. So I'm gonna zoom out, go back and click on the row. I'm gonna minimize left and right. And with that done, we're actually gonna change the auto back to having a gap. I'm gonna change the gap to 48. I'm gonna zoom in, select my right, take beginner's yoga and Laura Mipson, the heading and paragraph, group it again, and we're gonna add auto layout. I'm just gonna call it group. The reason I'm doing this is so that we can specifically modify the spacing between the heading and subheading. Now, one thing I've noticed is that the paragraph color is not ideal. So I'm going to select the paragraph Click on the fill properties. Let's change it to 800. It's a very minor change, but as you get better in designing, you'll definitely start noticing stuff like that. Okay, next up, I wanna add another column system within our row right. So the easiest way to do this is to reuse what you already have. So I'm gonna select a heading and paragraph over here. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna go back to right, minimize this group. I'm gonna paste it again. With that done, I'm gonna group it, activate auto layout. I'm gonna rename it to call. Going to duplicate it, select both of them, group it again, rename it to row, and auto layout that, change it to horizontal, and we're going to change the gap to auto. With that all done, we are going to select the paragraph. We're going to decrease the actual amount of content. And do the same for this part. Notice that I have a little space here at the beginning. I'm just going to get rid of that. With that done, I'm going to select the row again. And one thing I notice is that we have no space between these two columns. And the reason for that is because we've selected auto. Now I can change it back over here by clicking and selecting 25. But another thing I wanna show you is you can actually do it by selecting the row itself and hovering over here in the middle, you can drag it. So it's just another quick way of doing it. I personally like doing it over here, but 48 is what I want. Next, I wanna change these headings and make them a little smaller. I've noticed that H4 is selected, so H4 in the bootstrap properties, but let's keep it that. Perhaps let's change this one to H3. So to do that, I'm going to select it, and we're gonna select H3. All right, so let's have a quick preview and see how that looks like. Obviously, still a lot to do, but it's starting to form shape.